Shalom, my friends. It's happening very fast. Hatred of Israel, and make no mistake about it, hatred of the Jews is back with a passion. For a while, it was relatively dormant in the margins and on the fringes, but now it is back with a vengeance. Over Shavuot, my nieces were telling me how hard it's been for them and their friends that so many of their movie stars and celebrities that they follow and admire are turning against Israel. And they can't understand it because they are living the truth over here. They've been running to shelters in the middle of the night. They see from the inside what's really happening and they know what these celebrities are saying is not only wrong, but it's morally bankrupt and they can't understand why. And so my nieces turned to me over the holiday table and they asked me, so Uncle Ari, why does everyone hate us so much? You see, we spend so much time and energy in what's called Hasbara, Israel advocacy, defending Israel against these ludicrous, ridiculous, and infuriating accusations, apartheid state, disproportionate force, occupation, etc. We spend so much time defending ourselves that we don't take a moment and stop and ask why. There hasn't been a more dramatic contrast of good, of good versus evil since the Allies versus the Nazis in World War II. We're seeing Hamas, one of the most ruthless, genocidal terrorist armies on earth, versus the IDF, the most moral army the world has ever seen, and it's not particularly close. And unbelievably, the world is siding overwhelmingly with the Hamas jihadists. It's as if a spirit of complete insanity, a spirit of outrageous moral blindness is sweeping throughout the world, leaving the Jewish people standing alone. Why in a conflict that is so clearly good versus evil, why is so much of the world siding with the evil? Why is this happening? Why do they hate us so much? My sweet, beloved nieces were sitting there across from me with their innocent eyes, asking the same question that Jewish ha children have been asking generation after generation. They simply wanted to understand why. So as you know, on Shavuot, Jews have a custom of staying up all night and studying Torah in celebration of the greatest gift in all of human history, God giving us the Torah on Mount Sinai. And as I sat with my parents studying, we came to what I believe is the answer, or at least an answer to the question. The Talmud in Shabbat 89, it cites the source of Jew hatred. And the answer they give is the Torah itself. Why was the Torah given on a mountain called Sinai, ask the sages? Because the great Sinah, the tremendous hatred aimed at the Jew, emanates from Sinai. To understand this, you have to understand the Hebrew. The word Sinai, the rabbis explain, it's nearly identical to the word Sinah, Sinai Sinah, meaning hatred. The root of the hatred against us was the gift we were given at Sinai, the Torah. The world hates us because we were given the Torah. Now this answer didn't satisfy my nieces and I think it unsettled them even more. Some gift, the gift that keeps on giving, the gift that makes the world hate us. How is that a gift at all? And the more that I reflected on it, the more I realized that yes, on one level, the world may hate us because we bear a message that they don't want to hear, that there's an absolute truth that there is a God in the world and the idols that they've created in their own image, the idols that they cleave to are empty vanities and worthless falsehoods, that there is a living God that demands kindness and compassion, generosity and truth. And, and God has expectations of them that they don't want to fulfill, expectations that may conflict with their base lusts and desires to dominate through power and strength. But on a deeper level, Perhaps they hate us because we so badly want them to love us, because we so deeply yearn for them to accept us. And our mission in the world is not to be loved, but rather to love. It is not to be accepted, but rather to teach. It is to bear a message. It is to teach a truth. The Torah was not a gift for the Jewish people to keep to ourselves, but rather to share and to teach. We were tasked to be a light unto the nations, to teach the Torah from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem. The Torah is a mission. It's a responsibility. And perhaps on some level, the world's hatred stems from a deep 
subconscious resentment that we are not fulfilling our mission and bringing the message of God to the world. Recently, Jonathan Pollard, the heroic spy who saved countless Jewish lives by sharing critical information with Israel that America had vowed to share and did not, he recently shared this story that happened to him in prison. Listen to this testimony. One of the most important principles I learned in prison, believe it or not, was a simple one. It was to fear no one but Hashem. No one. And it came about in a very interesting way. There was a Nazi general that showed up on the compound, a white supremacist, a general, a brutal murderer. And he asked to see me outside my dorm. And he had 20 or 30 people with him, each one a murderer. And I said, okay. And my friends were trying to persuade me not to go outside because they were afraid I wouldn't be coming back in. But something told me, no, go. So I took the knife out of my pocket and put it down and walked outside. And of course, one of his guards patted me down to see if I were armed. And he laughed and he looked at this Nazi general with a big swastika on his forehead and said, the Jew isn't even armed. He's a real coward. And I started laughing and I said, no, I'm not a coward. I just am not afraid of you, that's all. And so the general looked at me and said, I've got 30 or 40 men with me now and hundreds on, on, in this prison. Who do you have? And I looked straight up with my finger. And I said, I have the biggest general of them all with the largest army you could ever imagine. So he looked at me and he said, so, and I said, so, I fear no one but God. And I don't know where it came from. It just came out of my mouth. So he extended his hand, a bloody hand, and I shook it because he was acknowledging the fact that there was a power bigger than himself. And I had no problem from him or his men for the next 20 years. Only when our very lives are a testimony to our faith in God and the truth that he entrusted us to teach to the world, only then will the world respect us. But we can only fulfill this mission on a national level, on a global level, when we are united together as a nation in our land. And that's what we're seeing happening before our eyes. The spirit of hatred is bubbling over and the masks are coming off. Jews around the world are being viciously attacked and assaulted. Not Israelis and not Zionists, Jews. And to me, the message is clear. It's time to come home. God is calling his nation home. And it doesn't matter how many social media posts declaring solidarity with Israel are posted. It doesn't matter how many blue dots are posted. It doesn't matter how many insightful articles are posted. Nothing will extinguish this hatred because the time has come, the time to come home. Unfortunately, we as Jews were a stiff necked people. We're stubborn. And I fear that the Jews of the exile are so deeply implanted that it will take things getting much worse before they hear the message. Hopefully it won't be too late. And this is why part of our message here in this fellowship is to inspire their return. The prophet Jeremiah said in chapter 16, Therefore the days come, says the Lord, that it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel from the lands of the north and from the lands of where he had driven them. And I will bring them back to their land that I gave to their forefathers. Behold, I will send for them fishers, says the Lord, and they will catch them. And afterwards, I will send for them many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, from every hill, and from the holes and the rocks. For many years, 
Jeremy and I have been broadcasting a message of beauty and joy and vitality of life in Israel to inspire people to return to the land of Israel through positivity and desire. For so long, we've been the fishers. But now I believe it's clear that Hashem is sending the hunters. And it's my prayer that the Jewish people have been through enough that we will see the writing on the wall before it's too late. And I believe that sharing that truth with the Jews of the exile is our calling and our responsibility. And I believe that it's a mission that we in this fellowship that we can fulfill together. But for now, allow me to end this message with a prayer that just as Hashem is sending a spirit of hatred among the nations of the world, that he send a spirit of love and courage to his firstborn Israel, that it's time to come home and finally fulfill our mission and responsibility, a, a, a responsibility to the entire world, to be his witnesses and broadcast the Torah from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem. Amen. Okay, friends, these days are historic and of biblical consequence, and we need to stay connected strongly in our bonds of brotherhood and friendship, not only to weather the storm together, but to rise to the occasion and be sources of light and truth that the world needs now more than ever. Love and blessings from Judea, my friends. Shalom. Back to you, Jeremy. This highlight was taken from the Land of Israel Fellowship. Every week, hundreds of families from literally around the world come together on our live Zoom sessions to strengthen each other, to inspire each other, and to learn Torah from the land of Israel, in which we connect the dots between the Bible, the Hebrew language, and the confusing events of our times. Go to www.thelandofisrael.com backslash fellowship or click on the link below to join. Thank you.